I'm Erica, and today I'll be taking you through what I call monthly composer tips. Okay, so throughout the last few months, I've done lots of stuff that I've been like, hey, that's kind of cool, but haven't really figured out a spot exactly where I want to put it. So this is just random tips that I've learned through composing through the last month or so that I think will value will benefit a lot of people. Okay, so the first one that we've got is pedal point. It's a very common trick. It's not one that, oh man, you've never heard of that. It is something interesting we're gonna do with it, but I just wanna specify why it's one of the best compositional techniques if you haven't done it yet. Okay, so here you'll hear it's quite quiet, um, but we've got a Gregorian tune. And um, that starts off a bit louder and it goes quiet, but you can hear what I've done here with this music box, which is the main melody, is it doesn't follow any key at all. For the most part, like it follows um, E minor, E harmonic minor, and then it sort of changes between like, because you call it the melodic minor scale, because you use both race and natural seventh. But um, it really is just random stuff. Like, again, it hovers around that for the most part. So that goes on for a while, um, it's meant to be ambient, but you can see here how like having that pedal point going on there keeps us grounded in that key. Yes, you can go into, and like here what we've got, um, A, B, G sharp, or A flat if you like, um, we'll keep it a, yeah, and then, wait, well, so you, you can see how we've got this part here, you know, for, for example, um, where we're going A, B, G sharp, and we've got this, which kind of makes an A uh, diminished chord with the seventh in there, a half diminished, I guess. Because you've got the, just the rate seven. So, and if we go back a bit, okay, now we've got, now we've got whatever the hell's going on here. And that makes a different chord or a different scale or whatever. It doesn't really matter exactly what scale it is. And yes, most of the time it is going around that E minor. But yeah, we see these other things, which you could even attribute these to E major if you liked. But if you hear it, there is not a major tonality at all. So I wouldn't really go that way. But you can see that like, because I can, because I just have that pedal point, I can add all these random notes and they don't sound out. I can change the tonal, uh, the, I'm going to say tonal center, even though the, the uh, root note has stayed the same. So it's a very simple way to swap between keys. And I, I don't have an exact, I can't show you that that is an exact example right now, but I've been working on a piece that I will, I guess, talk about later if you want, but where the key changes constantly. It goes between like using the uh, some Japanese scale, the normal minor scale, it goes to the pentatonic for a bit, and all of these changes that I don't even have to worry about because it's just a pedal going on underneath that I can change the tonality so easily. So I think that's something that's really cool that you can do with pedal points. So I don't know where it's gone apparently, but my um, the thing I did the other week for the anime um, soundtrack is uh, gone. I don't know why, I think it's... I just wanted to show you that because people think of the pedal as a low note, as that makes the most sense, theoretically. 
but we can also keep the pedal in a high note or even in the mid register. Anywhere you want, it can be done. Um, and I just want to sort of show a quick example of that before we move on to the next. This next one is a lifesaver for me anyway. It's when you're writing music, you start writing and you go, oh, God damn it. I cannot go that low on this instrument. So you can do two things. You can either grab the um, thing and literally tune it down. Like if it can't go down and then all you do is you select your parts and you go, I moved it down four semitones. Let's move it up four semitones or whatever, right? Um, but what I'm gonna show you is what I did here. Okay, so you're gonna listen. Um, you're just gonna listen for now. You hear that? Where it went out of register? <laughs> I know you didn't. I don't know, maybe you did. But, so here, if I just solo this part. That note is out of register, that's C. And I was figuring out what I wanted to do. Was I gonna do what I showed you before about just turning it, tuning it down and then or whatever? And I opted off that. I figured it's quite a woody texture, especially in that lower register. So being a woody texture, I had a few options. I could either pick something that was quite woody itself, maybe like a solo clarinet or another woodwind instrument of it, like another, this is, I don't even know what this is. It's not an alto flute, I changed it. It's this, bow, a boo woo. Um, so I could have just gotten some other random wooden instrument. Instead, I opted for a solo cello in the high register. And now if we hear these two together, especially soloed out, you can very clearly clear it. Clearly hear it. So, and then it goes on to a counter melody. But I, I thought that was just a smooth way to actually transition into that counter melody too, is this, the, the boo woo kind of transfers the melody into this. And you, when you solo it, yeah, you can hear it. It's, it's still quite smooth, I think, because you can't really hear this, this doubling. I think it's a, a very nice timbre. Um, but then of course here, it comes in. Um, and I'm just gonna show you again, really quickly, just unsoloed so you can hear everything. Right, like that. Um, and I just think that's a nicer option. I still, not in this piece actually, but in some other pieces I still will um, literally just tune it up because I can't be bothered and I'm like, whatever, it's one note or something. Um, but I think that's a really cool technique that I'm definitely going to utilize more. And I think you should too. It even follows into my next point. So my next point is layering for emotion. What does that mean? So that's, I guess it's a, it's a timber thing, but I'm not talking about the combination of violin, um, uh, harp and um, flute, which is my absolute favorite orchestration instrumentation 
of all time. I, I mention it in like every single video, even though I don't use it all the time. Oh, it's so beautiful. But um, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about where, I'll show you it now, where we've got a woodwind instrument, an Asian woodwind instrument, and I wanted to bring out some character into that. So if we listen here, that's not a bassoon, that's a shakuhachi. So you can hear there how we've kind of, again, I'm just going to solo uh, these two parts. So we've just got like a string, I mean, a, a woodwind part going, and I wanted to make it a bit more emotive, a bit more heartfelt, and a bit more human and personal. So I... I layer in that shakuhachi, which sounds with, like... It's got those like movements and stuff, which is quite, it's quite nice. As, as you can hear, layering those two together was a nice way to sort of, to convey a little bit more delicacy. Another example of that is, okay, so here we can hear it again. So, there we can hear it again, um, and it's very subtle, it's only in that one part, and apparently right there. So, we can hear if we just solo out these strings, but actually I'll just solo first. This is the, um, from Albion 5, the Gypsy Shorts, that they do this thing where it just like, it sounds awful in the best way. So I got this like, almost harmonics coming through. And so if we um, play the two together... You can hear sort of there how um, it adds just the slightest bit of delicacy. Again, if we play like in full context... And of course there it doesn't seem like it's necessary. Um, I can even turn it up a tiny bit to sort of show you exactly how it sounds like. Because yeah, again, with just strings you don't really hear it, but with the whole rest of the orchestra you can hear how we're building up to something in a way that's not building in strength. It sort of, it feels like we're falling apart and we need to grab onto something. So to achieve that, I literally just doubled the strings. You've got the main one making the main sound, and then these ones here that are, are just coming in just for the sole purpose of giving it a little bit of texture onto those strings. So. Like that. So this of course can, oh, I actually do this later as well. I actually do this in another track as well. But I'm not gonna show you, it doesn't matter. Point is, you, you, yeah, you get it. So it's just a very, very, very handy way of sounding more, I guess, human and realistic. Because we could tell a player, can you really overblow that bit at the end? Or can you dig your thing in the bow or, or whatever? We can't do that with samples. And so this is a very effective way to achieve just that. I could even, if I wanted, I could go into here and I could um, get up a, I don't know, just an EQ and I could just cut that uh, here. So we only got those high arc uh, artifacts coming in. But um, yeah, it's neither here nor there. It's just meant to be a slight little bit of texture in there that when you add lots of these, and there are ones scattered around and stuff, like here you can hear how I've added in the um, the shorts and like, th there's this stuff going on, but right there. Now, the last thing I want to show you, this is an absolute lifesaver. So, 
I'm here. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Look at how many scrolls I'm doing. I'm getting absolutely nowhere. Oh, wait. Look at this. Oh, okay, not that. That You can do that too. We hit control or command, whatever you guys call that in, in, in Apple land. Look at one scroll. Full screen. Full screen goes. How cool is that? I discovered this by accident the other day. It has saved me so much time because I keep my pianos at the bottom. So if I want to go to pianos, I have to scroll that whole way. Now it's like we're down at the bottom. So cool. There is one annoying thing is like see grandeur here. Um, well not grandeur. Uh, okay, like chorus here. Like chorus is like gone, right? So if I'm scrolling, I'm like, oh, where's chorus? Oh, here it is. I can't click on it. Unless I went down to that, and then it's a bit weird because it's like I can't see anything. Which is being very, very picky. Like all I gotta do is scroll one extra time or whatever. But that's not a composing thing, but that I am still blown away by it. And I do it every day now. I'm like, check it. Watch this. Boom. I'm not scrolling. Whoa, that's cool. The colors? <laughs> what? <laughs> right, the more you know. Thanks for watching.